everyone. Back with another track. Uh, same tempo as before. This is uh, blues in F, a jazzy blues. It's at 130 beats per minute. The track is down there in the description. It's free. Uh, just hit the link. should be able to either download it or just play it. Um, going to cover the rootless voicings again. And once again, I'm not going to explain the chords too much. And I really don't even want you to think about the chords. I just want you to get them under your fingers so that you kind of know where to go automatically. So you'll have to do it about 100 times maybe before that happens. But you know, just keep playing through the track and playing those chords. Give them a little rhythm if you want. Start on F7. Now before, the track we did was in C. And we started here. All right. All right. And there's, there's two shapes I want you to become familiar with. They both involve a tritone down here. All right, that's a, that's a, uh, it's not a fifth, it's a, like a flatted five. And it will be the third and the seventh of the chord. Like in C, this is the third, that's the seventh, okay? And then on top here, we're either gonna go up a perfect fourth, all right, to give us shape one, all right? And these are like the three note versions of the four note shapes, all right? So you might be familiar with those, but we're gonna use the three note ones for a couple of reasons. They're easier to play, and they give you more freedom as to what you can do um, because they don't define a particular chord quite as much as the four-note versions do. So we're just going to play these three-note versions. And a real common thing is to go from this, which, which is the second position. We call it the B position, A position, B position, position one or position two. People have different names for them. Axis of the third, axis of the seventh, you know, if you want to go way back. Um, but we're starting with position one, and that's the one that has the tritone here and the perfect fourth up here. Now, a real common move is to move the tritone down half a step and move this down a whole step that gives you position two now to keep on moving we want to go to position one and it's just moving the tritone down you keep this one the same like that the next one you would move down here and move a whole step all right and you could practice this starting at any point you know start here that's position one so I got to move my thumb position two keep it there Work your way down like this. I think I did that right. So we're going to start with position one. And we're going to go to B flat next. So that's down here. And we move our thumb. Then we're going back to F. And on the fourth bar, lots of things can happen. You can go C minor to F and then go on, or just change that F to an F altered, right? Because now instead of this, this note, which was an unaltered 13th, we now have a flat 13, all right? And then we're gonna go down a half step, okay? So from the top. All right, on to B flat, and B flat again. There's a real common change where you go to like a, a diminished chord there, but we're just going to stick to B flat. And then we do the first of our two major moves here. We've got two moves and a, and a two five one that we really need to just get it under our fingers so we don't even have to think about it. So the first move is like this. All right, and I'm doing exactly what I explained a minute ago. Position one. Moving the tritones down, right? Moving them down again. And right here, it's gotten too low. I mean, it's not too low like there is too low, but it's getting a little bit low. I'd rather keep it up a little bit higher. So what can I do? At any point along this move, you can jump up a fourth, and that's the continuation of the move. And that's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to play the first two like this. One, two, then, and it's the exact same shape. It just happens to work out that way in this key. But I'm going to move up exactly a perfect fourth. All right, I'm going to hold my hand real still here. Boom, there it is. And then 
This is position two, right? That's not a fourth, so I'm gonna move like that. Now it is a fourth, and that's position one, and I'm good. Now, here's our two, five, one that we're going to. G minor. You could put the A in like that. That's like the typical rootless voicing, but it's easier just to go like this. The bass player will hit the G anyway. Uh, that'll make it sound like G minor. And then our C7 will be like this. We'll just move that bottom note down. All right, so that's our two, five, one, or that's the two, five anyway. Two, five, and our one is back to F. All right, we're in the key of F, so that's our one chord. All right, and the last move, super easy, I think. And just like in the video we did in the key of C, where we were in C, and we, our turnaround was to jump up a minor third and come down chromatically. Now we're in key of F, we're gonna do the exact same thing. We're gonna take this shape, move it up a minor third, and it just happens to be the exact same shape in terms of like the black key and the two white keys, right? So we're just going from there to there, and we're gonna go down chromatically, all right? You might recognize that chord anyway. One more time, and then back to F, okay? So I'm gonna play a little bit more of the track now, and I will start with just the rootless voicings. Then I'm gonna add some simple improv, using mostly the blues scale, or maybe I'll go like this. I'm just any of those notes are going to work. I'll keep it simple though, because simple is best. some of the chords. One thing more about that first move, at any point you can jump up a fourth and then continue the move. 
All right, so I did it here. But I could do it right away like this. And see, I come out the same place. Or I could do it a little bit later like this. All right, either way, I'm going to end back up here on G minor and then C seventh. And then, you know, with our turnaround, this is also mostly cycle of fifths. All right, the very first move here up to, up to here, right, it's like a D7 altered. That's not cycle of fifths, that's D to F, that's a 1, 6. Right. But then, as I come down chromatically, see, that's cycle of fifths. So even on my first move, I could have gone like that. I mean, but don't do that yet. Stick to what we've got here. Do the same thing over and over and over again. Get it into your muscle memory. And then, you know, it's much easier to start messing around with it and changing things around because, uh, you know, you have, some, uh, you have a solid foundation to build on. Okay, and I will be showing some of these other ideas that you can do with the uh, left hand, and you know it's a slightly different harmonic ideas, I guess. Okay, another thing that you can do with this track is you know practice your rhythm. Go one, two, and three, four. One, two, and three, four. And one, two, and three, four. And one, two, and three, four. One, two, and three, four. One, two, and three, four. Ba, ba, du, du, ba, ba. You know, change it up. Uh, you know, find a couple of rhythms on a jazz record that you like and just play them over and over again. That's really the secret is to, you know, repeat things many, many, many times to really internalize them. Don't always be searching for something else, you know. Let me go to another YouTube video and uh, find a new idea because I'm, I'm getting nowhere. No, you know, take, take what you know and get it to where you really know it. All right, anyway, the track is down there for free. I'll be doing other tracks, maybe faster, slower, and definitely some other keys as well. Uh, you know, a good CD, or however they do it these days, uh, to have is the Jamie Abersold Blues in All Keys, in 12 Keys, I think it's called, Blues in 12 Keys. Now, is it necessary for everybody to, you know, play in all 12 keys? Well, I mean, so many... You know, the jazz standards will start in an easy key like F, but then they'll end up in a different key like, uh, you know, D flat or something. So it is very helpful to learn how to do things in all 12 keys, but, you know, it's very, very time consuming to do that. And there's a great many players out there that, you know, are totally comfortable in one key and not so comfortable in another. So, you know, just decide what it is that you're trying to accomplish and take it from there. Uh, please mash that like and subscribe button. Help me get up there to 100,000. I'm like this close. And uh, I'll see you again soon. Thank you, everyone.